motorsport auctions, the global marketplace to buy and sell used race and rally cars, parts and associated equipment, visit their website for more details. Good morning everybody, welcome back to Bosworth Race Roundup, it's round 5 of the 2015 BMW Z4 and Mazda MX-5 Championship. Martin Gornicki takes pole at Donington Park ahead of Barry Bird and Simon Underhill, he was followed by Neil Bamber and Jason Cox. Now Jason is a new driver, he's joined us with motorsport auctions but due to connection problems he dropped out of the race. Van Delden was next ahead of David Rowland and Phil Gregory, Ian Thorne and Matt Talea were next on the grid. Matt Talea takes his first pole in the MX-5s, he started ahead of Ian Robson and Chris Buttrell in third, he was ahead of Ricky Green and Russell Barnes, and further down the back, Brendan Tills did not set a qualifying time, nor did he start the race. A key back tire was late joining the session, and so was Marion Bradshaw. For this week's qualifying lap, we are going on board with Martin Gornicki. He set pole a 126.542. Coming through to start his qualifying lap then, it was lap number three of the session, with Tech Speed Racing and one of the MKB racing cars up ahead, making our way down the Weecroft straight down towards Redgate, the first corner here at Donington Park. We are running the Grand Prix circuit, so it is the extended version. Now coming through Redgate and it's onto the Craner Curves, they're your next couple of turns, turns two and three. From there it makes its way down to the old hairpin. Now this is one of the fastest parts of the course, very enjoyable for the drivers, keeping it nice and tight through here. And as you approach the hairpin it is hard on the brakes, try to cut it in early and keep the car on the track. Now start making our way up the hill, this is under Starkey's Bridge and into turn number six, that is followed by McLean. So it's hard on the brakes again for here, drop a couple of gears. Keep it again tight in, don't run too wide because it does tighten up very quickly. Now up a mini hill and this is up towards Coppice. Through here and we make our way onto the back straight. This is where the Dunlop Bridge used to be, the famous bridge, but that has now gone sadly. So we're going down Starkey Straight now, we're coming up to the S's next, the chicane. This is a left-right flick and takes us onto the GP part of the circuit. You can see where it turns right there for the national circuit. Nice and quick through there and now we're going down towards the Melbourne hairpin. The hairpin is a fantastic place to make a move, so if you are on the back of somebody, here would be the place to do it. So real tight through here, it seems to carry on forever. And then it's back up towards Goddard to the final turn. There is the old pit entrance into Donington Park on the left hand side. And through the final corners now and back onto the main straight. The top four drivers in the Z4s were separated by just over 0.3 of a second, so it promises for a fantastic race here at Donington Park. Acorn Printing are the team wear supply for Bosra and have even produced clothing items for President Clinton. See the video description to learn more. Round 5, the midway point then, about to get underway here at Donington Park. Martin Glenicky sits on pole ahead of Bird and Underhill, we're waiting for the lights to go green. You see the gap left on the track by Brendan Tills, he didn't start the race. So Simon Underhill right at the back of Gornicky up towards turn one, deciding to make a move early on. He pulls between Bird and Gornicky, there's contact between them. So Simon goes into the lead, there's even more contact then between Bird and Gornicky. Simon storms off, the Bird is left with damage to the car. You can see there the right front of his car, he's slowing down. We're going to move back and start the race again with Neil Bamba this time and get his point of view of it. Bird is just ahead of him with Martin and Simon on the right hand side. It's great to see four teams feature in the top four as we start the race. So down into the first corner we go, Simon squeezes through the gap, more contact there. Neil Bambo won't be wanting to get involved with that and sits behind Barry for a little while before he can get through before hitting the greater curves. Down we go then, this should be a fantastic race, we're going to move back to the start of the MX-5s now. This is on board with Robson, there on the left hand side is Matt Talea, now Matt is renowned for how quick he can get off the line, people have been asking for tips on the forums. So off the Z4s go into the distance, Matt has already opened up a slight gap, so Ian cannot make any sort of move into the first corner. 30 minutes of racing get underway, it should be interesting because there are plenty of passing opportunities here at Donington. It'll be interesting to see as well how the Z4s get bottlenecks behind the MX-5s once they catch them a few laps in. We're going to move on though because there was action pretty much straight off the bat, this is still lap number one. Into the Melbourne hairpin, three wide, that's McCain, Malcolm and Ricky Green. Ricky Green and Scott Malcolm forcing Alan McCain off track. Ricky Green also getting a tap, Scott Malcolm gets away with it. Lap number two, and it was all happening in the MX-5. Chris Buttrell was trying to fend off an attack from Russell Barnes to stay in the top three. Just ahead is Ian Robson for Benton Boys Racing. Up in the distance is Matt Talea. He has stormed off into the lead. So here we are, three McQueens keeping an eye on Ian Robson. His car goes sideways. Both Chris and Russell take a void in action. Great car control there from Russell. And his teammate Adam Thorne just behind, giving him a tap in the back. You can see this from another angle now. We're going on board with Russell as he chases Chris. So there you see Ian coming across the track going left and right and past him. 
So Russell gets it all straightened up after that little scare and then a tap in the back. Russell not needing a pit stop and joining further down. Moving on to now, this is Jan Morozova chasing Adam Thorne and as we come up to the chicane, Jan having to take a void in action and go off trout, that caused him a 17 second penalty. He would serve that up into the next few corners. Staying with Jan, he was then chasing Martin Brandon into the final corners, giving him a tap in the side and spinning Martin off the track. Jan headed into the pits while Martin waited for all the traffic to pass, getting the car back the right way round and himself heading into the pits as well. We've witnessed some great fights throughout this championship and round five was no exception. This was Phil Gregory and Akib Akhtar. These were fighting it out for sixth and seventh on track. Phil Gregory few in the heat down towards the old hairpin. Akhtar taking more speed through there and coming up round the inside up towards McLean's. He's got the better line now as we go into the next few corners. Phil deciding it wasn't the time to try and force something through here so he backed off. Akhtar taking sixth. Staying with the Z4s, but another scrap that was going on. This was between David Rowland and Van Delden. Yet another respectful tussle for position. This was for fourth and fifth. So Van Delden is all over the back of David's car, coming up to the chicane. Van Delden cannot make a move through there, so he backs off a little bit. We're now onto the Grand Prix part of the circuit, going down towards the Melbourne Loop. Van Delden was finding it ever so difficult to find a pass around here. So David took the inside line and protected it through the loop. But as we come up the other side, it was Van Delden who had the better exit out of there. Getting a run on David up towards the final two left-handers coming past the traffic. That's one of the most sport auctions MX-5s there as they're coming through the traffic then. One of the Bowden Solutions Z4s just behind as well. Moving on, we're going to go on board now with Ian Thorne. He was chasing Chris Butterall as we go down towards the Melbourne Loop. Keep an eye on Chris though because he drops the gears way too early and pops the engine in the MX-5s. That would cost Chris a lot of places. Good thing it happened at this point on the track so he could make his way back up and into the pits and take his pit stop at the same time while making repairs. An easy position game for Ian then, that puts him into second place. Matt Talia was still way off in the distance. We see Chris slowing down and allowing Ian to come past as we come on to the start of the next lap. More action in the traffic, this time it was Jan Elizabeth yet again. So he was being passed by one of the tech speed racing cars through the crane curves. There was no contact but Jan off track. A very bad week for him this week, he picked up more incident points and ended up with a penalty. Francis Leno was the next driver to pick up a penalty, he couldn't make it through the chicane and cut the corner here, he was being chased by Gary Bradshaw. Gary picks up a position as the traffic comes through, we see Francis has slowed down. Moving on to Ricky Green, he then went off wide with Martin Brandon chasing. You see just coming up through the corners onto the back straight, Ricky just putting it a touch too wide and onto the grass allowing Martin to come past. Not a week goes by without us mentioning the battle between Neil Bamber and Van Delden. Here they are then, there's Neil Bamber from MKB Racing coming onto the back straight. He's been followed by Van Delden and Martin Gwenicke for Acon Printing. As we swap cameras you'll just see one of the Bowden Solutions cars lost it through the traffic. We're going to concentrate on this battle because as we come into the chicane... Bamba does lose it, he gets the car all sideways, so Van Delden picks up the position, but he does collect his teammate Martin Gwenicke. Martin goes through and Neil has to get the car back onto the track. He does carry on with the race though. Moving on to a defining moment in the MX-5s, we're chasing Scott Malcolm. He'd taken the place from Chris Buttrell as he'd gone into the pit. You can see Chris had made his way back up and he's just behind. Simon Underhill's making his way through the traffic, but then does give Scott a top in the side. This is coming around the Melbourne hairpin. So there is a void in action from Simon Simon and Chris Buttrell but there was contact, uh, there was nothing to suggest the contact really on the replay, it's only the faintest of tarts but uh, you can see the contact between them just ahead. So Chris slows down and as he comes past Scott you'll see there's damage across the car, Chris has to then start staring to the left all the time. Only a couple laps were left to go but that did mean that Chris would be demoted down the field. To our race winner then it was Simon Underhill who led from start to finish after that pass at the first corner on lap number one. He was closely followed by Van Delden and Gornicke in third. A great result for Acorn Printing, they had two cars on the podium. Bowden Solutions produce the very best load cell mods and pedal adapters to use with Thrustmaster wheels. You can order yours now at bowdensolutions.com. After another week of fantastic racing, it's time to check on the results. It was Simon Underhill who took the win ahead of Van Delden. Van Delden also picked up the fastest lap of the race. A great week for Acorn Printing was completed with Martin Gwenicke in third on the podium ahead of Neil Bamber and David Rowland. Akhtar finished ahead of Phil Gregory after that fantastic battle we saw between them. Barry Bird, who will be disappointed because he was off the track after the first couple of corners and into the pits, he finishes eighth for Tech Speed Racing. Ian Thorne finishes ninth in the Bowden Solutions Z4 and then it's on to the MX-5s. Matt Talia takes his 
his win there ahead of Russell Barnes and Adam Thorne, the Bowdoin Solutions drivers carrying on with their charge throughout this championship. They finished ahead of Darren Ford and Ian Robson with Chris Bottrell finishing behind him in 15th overall. Alan McCain was next ahead of Francis Lennon and Ricky Green. Scott Malcolm came home next ahead of Martin Brandon and Marion Bradshaw. Jan Melesva ran out of the field, a bad week for him with Jason Cox retiring from the race. The main focus is on the driver's standings though, and it is still Adam Thorne out ahead for Bowdoin Solutions, 122 points. He's ahead of Simon Underhill and Van Delden, the top three. Scott Malcolm stays in fourth ahead of Russell Barnes, who gains a place. Matt Delay is the biggest mover this week. He's up five into sixth. Neil Bamba drops two places, and Martin Glenicky drops a place into eighth. Akhtar is next up ahead of Darren Ford and Alan McCain. Ricky Green, a not-so-good week for him. He is just ahead of David Rowland and Phil Gregory, who stays in 14th. Chris Buttrell could have had a better week and climb more places but he does climb 3 into 15th. Barry Bird's next ahead of Ian Thorne and Jan Melesva. Ryan Walker didn't attend this week, he's in 19th, he drops 5 places. Marion Bradshaw picks up 1 place, he is ahead of Brendan Tills who drops 4, he had to disconnect and leave the race tonight. Francis Wenall is up next, he's ahead of Martin Brandon, Jonathan Beresford drops 2 places, we haven't seen him this week. Ian Robson's ahead of Jason Cox, our new driver, and Ronnie Goodman's remains at the bottom. As for the team standings, well there's no changes here, it is still Bowdoin Solutions out ahead of MKB Racing with Acorn Printing in third. Bentley Boys Racing sit in fourth, they're 63 points behind the leaders with Team Clockwork up behind them in fifth. Motorsport Auctions are 172 points behind the leader and a poor showing from Tech Speed Racing sees them bottom once again with 168 points. Next week is round six, we're going to Lime Rock Park for that, that promises to be very interesting, it is a very tight track so expect to see plenty of action there. Just before we go, just let me remind you as I always do, if you haven't already then please subscribe to our YouTube channel, we're bringing more videos all the time, we've just released a how-to for Sony Vegas, so if you fancy watching that, that's what you can watch next, if not we'll see you next week for round 6. Thank you ever so much for watching, we'll see you again soon, bye bye.